God to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Ecclesiasticus, or the Wisdom of Jesus, Son of Sirach. Give to the Most High as he has given to you, and as generously as you can afford. For the Lord is the one who repays, and he will repay you sevenfold. Do not offer him a bribe, for he will not accept it. And do not rely on a dishonest sacrifice, for the Lord is the judge and with him there is no partiality. He will not show partiality to the poor, but he will listen to the prayer of those who is wronged. He will not ignore the supplication of the orphan or the widow when she pours out her complaint. The word of the Lord. Be Let us read in unison Psalm 84. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house, they will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will dwell from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. A reading from Paul's second letter to Timothy. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. 
But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus also told this parable to some who trust in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Welcome home to St. Anne's. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. Okay, well, let's talk about the story, shall we? Because I feel like this is one that really speaks to us. Um, okay, so here's our rough story. So um, Jesus is really, really frustrated because remember, Jesus comes to preach um, and, and share the gospel, right? And there are some people who are like, yeah, I'm good, I got it. Um, in fact, you, Jesus, are not doing it well enough. This is my favorite. Um, I, back in my old, old church, I, um, I, had a, when I had an event where I would go out and, and drink and talk to anybody, right? And so young atheists, especially young males, they love to be atheists. They think that they just discovered it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like nobody until 2015, when they hit the age of 23, had discovered the questioning of Jesus. Really? Okay. So they would come, and they would say, okay, so, um, well, Christians, Christians don't believe in, in gay marriage. Yeah, I do. Well, but Christians don't believe in women's rights. Yeah, we do. You're a lazy Christian. Okay. If this is what a lazy Christian looks like, I, I don't even know what to do anymore. But okay. So, um, so we have these, so these people are like, we got this. We don't need you, Jesus. In fact, you're not doing it right enough. I'm sorry, the Son of God isn't doing it right enough for you? Okay. So that's kind of what, so he's doing these teachings, and he's like, okay, y'all drive him in crazy. Because they're busy judging other people for not being gooder enough, right? You're not good. You're not. You're not gooder. You should be. You should be more like. Yeah, like that. Okay. And Jesus is like world's biggest eye roll. But okay. So he tells this story, and he's like, you know, cute friends. Here's a fun story. So um, Jesus likes to pick on the Pharisees. And in all honesty, the Pharisees have. Like, let's not pick on the Pharisees too much, okay? But the reason that Jesus is picking on the Pharisees is because they're the most of the most, right? They're, um, gosh, Grace and Holy Trinity Cathedral. Up here. They got the big time theologians are following the rules. They got all the really good stuff, right? This is not me hating on Grace and Holy Trinity Cathedral, okay? They've got amazing stuff. They're doing really, really cool things. But they're up here, right? 
That's where the Pharisees are. So Jesus sometimes is like, okay, calm down, because you're so worried about being up here, but you're not worried about the gospel. Let's talk about the gospel. And so he uses a Pharisee as an example. And he says this Pharisee goes, and he goes to the temple, and he's praying, and he's like, thank you, God, that I'm not as bad as them. And we can laugh, but I want us to dig deeper into that because that is frequently where we as humans go, right? We have trouble getting to where the tax collector is, where we are real and honest because humility is not about beating yourself up. Humility and what this tax collector is doing is about being honest with yourself because remember, tax collectors at the time were doing some pretty rotten stuff. You know how tax collectors get money? Okay, so let's do a quick history lesson of how you get paid at that time. So tax collectors were part of, of the Jewish community, right? But you can't use Jewish money to pay um, secular society, right? So you have to get that money switched over. And the tax collector's job was to be a go-between. So they were frequently from the community. All right. But remember, the higher-ups are not being nice to the Jewish community. So the tax collectors who are this go-between are seen at, for being full of betrayal. And the only way that they're getting paid is because they would charge extra. So they got forced to do this job, but they weren't actually being paid to do the job, so they would take more to actually get paid. So can you see the level of betrayal and the hatred that is felt towards the tax collectors from their own community because they feel like they're being betrayed by these people, right? Okay, so in this moment, that tax collector is being honest with God. Being honest. Like, I am struggling, God, because I know that who I am and what I'm doing isn't what you're asking of me. And I'd like to imagine that after this moment of clarity that the tax collector goes and works on being better, right? Because hopefully after a moment of clarity, we work on being better. But I'm not so worried about that part of the story because I think the one that you and I need to focus on is the Pharisee because that's usually where we land. It takes us a while to get to where the tax collector is. So let's just start by getting to that point, okay? Let's not worry about what the tax collector does next. Let's worry about how we're going to get to that step where we're willing to be that honest and humble. Okay, so usually, not always, but many of us struggle with self-identity, with who we are. So in our culture, we frequently figure out who we are by what we think other people think we are. Okay, so instead of doing my own internal work, I'm going to look at other people and compare myself to them, and then figure out who I am in regards to that. It's why, and we all get confused when um, a minority group who is really attacked and persecuted turns around and attacks and persecutes another minority group, right? And someday we'll go into how that empowers the higher system and all that good stuff. But today I'm just going to point out that that's what we do. And the reason that we do that is because if I can do that, at least I'm not as bad as that. And then everyone else's energy and focus removes from me, and I'm in a safer place, okay? Make a little bit of sense? It's kind of hard for us who are in the majority and in the power positions to understand how that works. But it's a safety issue. But what I want us to focus on is this Pharisee is a Afraid. The reason that we do that, that we figure out who we are by comparison to other people, like I figure out if I'm a good priest by what other priests are doing, right? And if I can say, well, at least I'm not doing that, like, at least I'm not a Baptist. <laughs> I'm going to say that, Missouri, because there are a bunch of former Baptists in here, and some who are still kind of on the edge, right? You know it. You know it. <laughs> but I'd be like, well, at least I went to seminary. And at least I, like, know Koine. And meh. Or I 
might do that in education, right? Well, um, I mean, at least I'm not at that school. At least I'm not doing what that teacher is doing, right? And instead of doing my own internal work, I'm going to figure out who I am based on comparing myself to other people. So, yeah, I may not have achieved all my dreams, but at least I don't drive that kind of car. At least I have this kind of car. Have you noticed that? Missouri is really, really good at this. We are the state of at least, it's not as bad as. See? Yeah. You come into Missouri and you're like, so we have an issue with this. And Well, it could be worse. It could be Arkansas. <laughs> it could be Baptist in Arkansas. You know? Oh, my God. This goes on the Internet. I'm going to get in so much trouble. So I love you all. Say something nice at my funeral. Um, maybe have it Grace and Holy Trinity Cathedral because I have literally gone after everybody today. Okay. So um, back to what we were talking about. The reason we do this is because we are afraid. And you and I struggle with naming fear for what it is. We can't say it. So we say other things, and we put layers and layers and layers of protection on ourselves because we can't stand facing that particular fear. The Pharisee is saying, at least I'm not as bad as that. Because the Pharisee is afraid. Because if you and I really looked inside, we are afraid of what we will find and what we will see. And so we do all sorts of things. We keep ourselves really, really busy. We like to be stressed out. I'm busy, 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 busy. I've got all these things to do. But the reason we do that is because we're afraid. And I invite you today to enter that fear. What are you afraid you will find? Are you afraid you'll be considered lazy? Are you afraid you'll be considered a failure? What are you afraid of? Are, are you afraid that you won't be acceptable to someone? That there's some sort of power out there that, will, that you are not good enough? You and I are afraid of being found out. Of being found out that we are a fraud, that we're lazy, that we're a fake, that we shouldn't be here. That's what you and I fear, and we can't name it. We are afraid to name it, so we cover it with all sorts of other things. Well, at least I'm not that. Well, at least this. At least that. Well, I'm so busy, I don't have time to do that. But what if we did? What if we were okay enough to do what that tax collector does and say, I feel safe enough, and I feel loved enough, and I'm okay enough to enter into my fear. I am okay if I'm afraid of being a fraud. I am okay if I'm considered being lazy. I'm okay with that. And you want to know what that means? That means a level of vulnerability and trust in God and God's love that we can enter into that space. That means a level of trust and vulnerability and love in our community, that we can enter into that space of saying, I'm afraid. I'm afraid of what I will see. I'm afraid of what you will see. Because what if, after 10 years, you realize that all this time, I'm the suckiest, worst priest out there? What if you realize that? What then? What if one of us realizes something about the other person? What if we realize something about your family? What if we learn that? What if we learn some deep, dark secret that you're so afraid of even God knowing? It means we trust God. That's what that means. And that is who we are called to be. We are called to be the tax collector. We are called to enter into that fear, into, into that vulnerability, that space of safety, because we're afraid that if, if it were known, that God wouldn't love us. That our community wouldn't love us. That we wouldn't love ourselves. But what if I tell you? 
What if I tell you, God absolutely loves you. God 100% loves you. You cannot be a failure. You are not a fraud. You are a fraud only if you're busy covering it up. Only if you are the Pharisee are you a fraud. The tax collector, the tax collector has already been in that place. The tax collector has already said, "Ah, I'm a fraud. And I know, I know that God will love me anyways. I know that I can enter into that space, and if I need to, I can change. And I also know that there's love in that space and acceptance in that space. What if you and I could do that? What would that look like? I invite you into that space. And I promise you, there is love there. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. one of my favorite jokes, all right? Here's one of my favorite jokes. What was the last thing that went through the bug's mind before it hit the windshield? (laughs) This is my best joke, people. It's butt. It's butt. The last thing that went through the bug's mind when it hit the windshield. It's butt. (laughs) That's like the best joke ever. Don't tell me it isn't. Let's stand together and say the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal and begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Son who is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism, forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and for the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. Oh, sorry. Uh, they have a new, we have a new print out here. It's harder to read. <laughs> Sorry. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For our presiding Bishop Michael and Diana Bishop, for Meg, our priest, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For those serving in our armed forces, especially Nathan, Sean, Robert, David, Ethan, Mark, Calvin, Janet, Jimmy, and Jack. For those traveling, 
for healing for Ruth Ann, John, Mickey, Les, JW, George, Junior, Terry, Kathy, Ed, Regina, Lynn, Robin, Steve, Jack, Wayne, and Freddie. Carolyn, Jack, Scott, Joni, Jackson, and Margie. For the homebound and those in nursing homes, for Mary. For guidance and strength, for Hope, Ben, Linda, the Hankins family, Kathy, Pat, Stephanie, Joseph, Ann, Janice, Ginger, Betty and Fred, and Lizanne. Hear us, Lord. <coughs> we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life for those celebrating birthdays, for Janice, Becky, and Michael, for those celebrating anniversaries. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially for Scott. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. And give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city. With the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, my friend.
walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God and a hairball. <clears throat> come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to claim the glory of your name. and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, and your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. 
In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. And bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Anne and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses. Give those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Either that's the new bottle or I normal walk down a lot more. <laughs> These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. You're going to have your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. disclosure I'm tired <laughs> Thank you. 
altar, but you know what? Coffee is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy. <laughs> this is the only church who has, like, pre-church coffee hour and then the post-church coffee hour. Raise your glass if you have coffee out there. You know you do. It's gotten us through a lot of church, people. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Son, Jesus Christ. And you fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessed and almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. I know. Keep saying it. Sing it again. Y'all are like, I'm going to kill you if you give me more verses, though. May I steal one of those? Thank you. You would think as the person who, like, makes these and prints them and puts them out, I would have one every week. No, I don't. Please be seated. Oh, there's one flying at me. <laughs> Points for best folded airplane. They come to me. All right. First, I would like to thank uh, um, everybody who's worshipped with us, whether you be here in person online. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You have greatly nurtured our worship, and we hope that we have enriched yours as well. So again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, just a few things to highlight. Next Sunday is our Oktoberfest. Okay, y'all, I'm tired, if you haven't noticed. We're just going to stay here. Okay. Next Sunday is our Oktoberfest, so we will have our trunk or treat celebration, and can I get a paw in the air if you can bring a fire pit? Fire pit. All right, we got a couple fire pits. Yes, we have fire pits. So bring stuff for hot dogs and s'mores and whatever you want to cook out, um, and we will just have a fun outdoor time um, after church. So mark your calendars for that. Kids, if you want to wear your costumes, you may. Um, adults, if you want to wear your costumes, you may. Um, costumes are highly encouraged, but not mandatory. Right now, Robert has, like, are you bringing this? The what? Yes! He has an inflatable tube man. It's the best. Points if you bring an inflatable T-Rex. That'd be awesome. Um, any other things I need to highlight? Vestry, don't forget, we have our meeting after the service, so grab your snackies and then head to the classroom. Um, anything else that I'm forgetting? Yes. Yeah. It's an island. It's just butted up against a continent. It's fine. California has been doing it for years. Now California is going to be mad. I was going to say I only have 48 more states <laughs> to tick off today. I've got all day, people. Mississippi. Okay, yeah, we'll throw Mississippi in there. Best thing about it is the river. <laughs> Anything else that I am forgetting? 
birthdays and anniversaries. Janice, it's Janice's birthday today. I know, I was so proud, guys. I wished her a happy birthday before her son did, and I was so excited. It's a little things, people. It's a little. Our prayers on the back of your sheet, so please join me. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in a heart and in peace, passive understanding. Abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Can I get kiddos up here to help me with the dismissal, please? Did you? Oh, I can't wait to see. Oh, I can't wait to see. Oh, this is the class pet for, what's his name? Oscar the Badger. Oscar the Honey Badger. You may pet it. He's not dead. All right, you guys ready? They are. Alleluia, alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you, God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, guys.